Getting rid of those old rags was probably the best idea I've had in a while. I wasn't sure at first if my fellow shipmates would trade with me, but in the end, it all worked out. The Magister nearby was pointing at me, wanting to have a conversation. So I went ahead to see what he wanted. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. So, what exactly are we registering for? Writing down important details? Blind lizard, able to cast blood-sucking spells. You faring okay so far? I've been through worse. Have you ever been to war? Losing friends because of your own carelessness? No, that's what I thought. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's Godwoken, you know. Godwoken? Another word for a sorcerer, perhaps? You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. I hope he does the same to your fellow workers. They can't even find a murderer on board a ship this small. The Magister opened up the door. As I walked in, I was introduced to a disgusting situation. You seem on edge, officer. What on earth is the matter? Murder most foul, and I strongly suspect you know all about it. Do you? Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. Are you suspecting her of murder? You magisters are all alike, pointing fingers at an old innocent woman. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. What? what Why? Why would you do such a thing? She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. I can tell she's looking at me. There are others whose lives must end. Right into the blindfolds. Good God, the woman's mad. Mad? No. Corrupted? Yes. You there, sorcerer. Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more to collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. What are you trying to imply, old lady? Why must there be more bloodshed? It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. By the divines! How did you pull that one out? I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Quick! Get to cover! Before she casts her spell! What? What happened? The scene that was left. After that spell was probably one of the worst I've seen so far. I couldn't tell if what I saw was the remains of the Magisters. I thought to myself, good riddance. And then it struck me. There was something worse about to happen, and I needed to be off this ship before it happens. I tried waking any of the survivors, but with no success. I took things that I deemed necessary, and I walked upstairs into the unknown. Hello everyone, Double X Soulblazer here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the small opening. There has been a huge gap in time between the first and the second episode, but now that I have things sorted out, I will actually continue the series as you can see. Now, enough of me rambling, let's get to it. Alright, I already played this section of the game 
with the mods that I installed on this uh, series. Now, the mods are pretty basic. Well, not really. I guess you could say they're basic. But the thing is, is we have tons more enemy. And to balance things out, enemies give you less experience. Now, with that said, right now I think the best thing to do would be to take care of the dogs. I know this sounds very terrible, but our character here, Ronashir, doesn't have the pep talk. So he can't negotiate with the dogs in order to, you know, maybe not harm them. But, story-wise, Ronashir sees the Source Hound as a problem. They're going to attack him if he lays his hands on any Magisters. So we're gonna do an initial strike on this one by going all in. And this should initiate our fight. Now the attack all in is our strongest attack, so that's why I used it first. And in this game, we have two types of armor. We have regular and we have magic armor. Now our goal here is to actually try and get that armor to zero. Now, once you get that to zero, you can use spells or moves that actually can stun the enemy or have like other side effects. Now, on here, I'm using Battle Stomp, which basically staggers the enemy and makes them skip a turn. So that gives us the opportunity to actually use something else like this attack. And Ronashir is talking. <laughs> now we should be able to strike back here, just like so. There we go. There, and now we can't use these two things because now they're on a timer. You got two turns before we can use that battle stomp again. So we're going to try to dish out as much damage as possible using the fire breath. And then we're going to go all in and it should be done. Now we're going to wait till the flames go out because right now if we walk through them, we're going to burn and it's going to hurt. So it should dissipate now. I'm gonna try and check if it had anything. And nope, it didn't. Now there should be another one right next to this door, but first things first, I wanna check if there's any loot around. There's a bit of gold here. A mug of beer, we can actually take that. It might positively or negatively affect us. There's also a treasure chest there. And not so good, not so bad. I guess we can do with that in the meantime. Also, I'm just gonna drag this and throw it in the fire. It should burn and the fire should go out. It's just simple as that. Now, there's another source hound in there. As soon as I attack it, it's not gonna aggro anyone inside there, so it's alright. You're just going to take an initial strike on it if it doesn't start the fight immediately. And we're hurt. So, next thing on the list here, I think, would be to actually burn it. And dish out as much damage as we can while it's burning. Uh, I guess a regular strike would do. No, I think we're gonna go all in just to try and break his armor. That was 10 damage. And we are possibly bleeding. No, I think we're fine. Um... Ronashir's special powers here is basically he can actually restore vitality by sucking blood that's around the area, even if it's his own. So I guess we're gonna do that right away. And we gain 6 health, maybe saving our hide in this case. Um, I guess one more attack should do, break his armor, and then after that we can just stun the thing for the next few turns. If we don't die. And apparently we're bleeding. So doing that, we're just going to stomp him out. Just like that. And I don't know if we should use the potion. I think we're going to skip that for now. Try and finish it off. Just one health. Wow, what are, what are the chances? Alright, with that done... Battle is finished, and we're just gonna use the bedroll here, the bedroll here, in order to heal ourselves up, and that's gonna give us a buff, which gives us strength, finesse, and intelligence for two turns. 
Which is not very useful. Well, it, it would be useful if I used it before a battle. But you know. And apparently that thing has a tooth. We're not going to take that. I don't see any use for that. We're, we're going to take the gold cup because it's actually worth a lot of money. And I'm going to check in here if there's anything. Nope. Now, this door has 30 health. And I'm going to quick save here just before this battle. The reason why I quick saved here is, well, sometimes the battle doesn't go as planned. So, in order to break down this door, we can't really lockpick because Ronashir is not... I don't remember putting him uh, any points in lockpicking. Uh, yeah. No, no thievering, no sneaking. He's just a regular mercenary. So in order to actually break down that door, we're going to use the crossbow. Reason why I don't use the sword is we're going to, if we start bashing the door with the sword, we're going to lose their ability. And crossbow, well, they have infinite durability, so do wands. So we're going to take care of that. And we're going to quickly switch back to our blade. And we're going to keep our uh, weapon handy here. And I guess this is the part where I'm basically going to go in Rona Shear's skin. Or scales in this matter. Damn, thank the gods. By the fine grace, what was... Oh, were you expecting rescue? Unless you cause no harm, we can maybe deal something out. He eyes the collar circling your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. Oh, so that's how it's going to be? Another sorcerer! You don't want to talk? Well, if this is what you want... The Magister's companion doesn't blink, frozen in place at the sight of you. Can you guys get this off of me? And maybe I can help you out. I am a warrior, after all. Even if I knew I had to rip that thing off, I wouldn't. Some crazy banshee comes screaming through, and now we got void bugs swarming up top. Sorcerer mutiny! Magisters, Magisters, you are always the same. He whispers loudly to the other Magister. Hmm. Don't just cower there, Rix. Take out your blade. Yeah, take out your blade. Rix grabs his sword, which shakes in the rhythm of his trembling hand. Hmm. Look, there is no mutiny. I almost died to that woman's hands. Rix looks to his companion, who then looks to you. They drop their hands to their sides. Good. Go on then. Find a place to hide, and stay there. And with that, apparently Ronashir was able to negotiate with them. He's not really the best talker in the world. But I guess, seeing how he is a free man, or a free lizard in this case, and has a weapon of his caliber, they decided not to attack him. Now that gave us a lot of experience and doing the battle would give about the same number of experience. Now what I'm going to do here is we're going to loot the place. It's kind of funny though because we got more enemies and they're basically like... They're basically like the same models. <laughs> I, I don't mind though so it makes the battles more interesting. I guess there are tomes there. I'm going to check in there. Resurrection scroll. That's kind of neat find. We can take the wood chip, maybe craft something later on. That's if we find recipes. Nothing in there. There's a treasure chest here. We got a disarming trap, and this is a lucky find. We basically find something really useful. And I guess it's the gold that was pretty, was pretty much the nice find here. We also got some apple juice to heal up. There's a few books here and there. I can open them up for you guys and you guys can look them up if you want to. I'm just gonna grab whatever I can here. It's a shabby leather here. Shabby letter. There's also a few books here. Alright, now let's check the books out. There you go.
my case, I will read those books just after the recording. Uh, yeah. You have to unlock this in order to get rid of them from there. I'm pretty sure I've installed a mod that doesn't automatically put things down there. Maybe it's not activated, I have no idea. Anyways, let's move on forward here. I guess we'll open this door. Yes, we do, Ronishir. But, in this case, we are not really in a hurry. I mean, we got plenty of time. I haven't seen any scenarios where things would go wrong if you're just fooling around in this game. In other words, we're not on a timer. And I'm just gonna take my time and loot the corpses and stuff around here. It's a lot of gold, though. Uh, there's a way here. Let's grab this. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Okay, there might be a few things on the Magister Knight here. Let's just cross our fingers. Nope, just gold. The swordsman here. Something's pounding on the hull. Calm down, Ronishir. <laughs> Oops. I didn't want to grab that. You can actually grab stuff and move them around if you want. You can strategically use it for other things. You're gonna grab that. Now I think there's still a few things around here. Yeah. Let's grab what's in there. Let's see what your what you have on you. A hatchet and my first bow. Not really useful for us because Ronashir is a two-hander. That means he can hold any weapons that are quite heavy, I guess. Here we go, and we're gonna move that over there. Prevent us from burning further. We're just gonna heal real quick with this. Grab that. Some gold, a note, and a key. Now, what does the note say? Murdoff, dead five barrels have been locked down in storage. Stay out. You and Rick's both. If anyone starts fooling around down there, it'll be lights out. Now, for those who played Divinity 2, which is not original sin, they know what the dead fog, the dead fog is, and I know what it is. Now, Ronashir, as he turns around, notice a peculiar, strange being in that other room. He goes and meets up with it. You. Are you okay? Do you need any help? You pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. Wait. You're not a human being. You look like a pile of bones to me. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. Why are you reading that book? No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? Can I help you? It catches fire. It turns into must when wet. It cannot even resist acid. No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. Uh, hello? The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Hi. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? Um... Why are you saying it's me? Wait. There's something familiar about you. And the way you're holding the book. Wait. You're that elf! The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. Yes, indeed. It's the look of someone that wants to read the bloody book he's holding. Well, I'm sorry then. Maybe I should take my leave. Now, if you're really quite finished, I believe you have lifeboats to flee to. And why aren't you fleeing? You're just gonna go down with this ship. Do you look at me and think, why yes? There is someone with organs enough to drown. <sighs> Trifling matters like water and poison do not concern me. Why, see, you are the first that I see of your kind. Nope, damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the seafloor, I will simply walk to shore. 
Is that so? Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. You're right. This ship is going down. And I don't have time to talk to you. If I do survive this, if we meet again, I hope it'll be positive. Remember, one of your race's weaknesses is having your lungs filled with water until you can no longer breathe. So, try to avoid that, perhaps. Thanks for reminding me. The skeleton resumes his search, leafing through page after page, while hunching over the book in a futile attempt to keep it dry. With that, Ronashir met Fane's real face. You know, the elf that we met on the first episode. He's actually an undead. Now, with that, Ronashir is going to walk around here and since he found a key, he's going to see what's behind this door. The marking on the door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply grey. The colour drains from your hand, and you are left numb. And we're gonna pull open the door because Ronashir wants to know what's behind this door. It doesn't budge. Since he can't really open it without a key, we're gonna use the our key. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. And this is dead fog. We cannot walk in there unless we are undead, I think, at least. <laughs> and with that, we actually gain experience, which is pretty good. Now we're gonna check what's on her. Just two gold. And since Ronashir sees what he's seeing here, he's just gonna go. He says, this ship is a lot of trouble. I need to get out of here. And so he does. And with that, this ends the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Soul Blazer, out.